Hello, it's Brian Patton again from Bodicey, and we're going to continue, or actually we're just going to get started now on uh, building the uh, the new robot design based upon the uh, Teensy 3.1. And uh, <clears throat> since if this is the very first time you've done any programming, you're going to have to install some software. Um, I actually like to still just get it from here. These are the people that actually design and manufacture the Teensy and they have a nice website that has links to everything you need because you're going to need two pieces of software and I don't know what kind of computer you have so I'm going to let you guys sort of figure some of this out uh, the first thing you're going to need is your Arduino software okay and here is plenty of instructions and information about what and how to install the Arduino IDE, whether it's on a Mac or if, whether it's on a Linux system or, or whatever it is you have. All the information is here and it seems to work uh, flawlessly. It's, it's done really, really well. Once you have that installed and know where you installed it, Okay, if you don't put it in the default directory, or even if you do, make sure you pay attention to where it installs because now you're going to have to install the Teensy Duino software. Okay, this is what's going to communicate between the Arduino software and the Teensy itself. And they have some excellent instructions here how to install it. Be sure to install it into a directory which is associated with Arduino. And you should be good to go. So once you've done that, you should have on your desktop um, an Arduino icon and software. And there we go. Now, every time you open the software, it's going to um, load up your last piece of code. I wrote a blank piece of code that has nothing more than a comment line. Two slashes meaning a comment. It's not seen by the compiler. It's for your notes only. It only appears in this text. It won't be compiled. And I just put my name and the year. Okay. Uh, comment lines are really important and we'll see that as we move along. Uh, so let's plug in, oh actually you know what, yeah let's plug in our Teensy. And you probably heard my computer happily chime away that it was found something and is now connected. Um, if you only have one thing, then uh, one COM port, I'm sorry, one thing in your comms, it should be super easy to set up. You're, it's going to plug in, it's going to install, and you're going to come up to tools, you're going to choose that you have a TNC 3.1, if in fact that's what you have, and you're going to choose the serial port that it's connected to. Only one thing is hooked to my computer right now, so the choice is obvious. It went to COM 10 which is where it installed it to. Uh, if, for example, you don't uh, have just one, you have more than one, I would recommend going and finding out exactly where your TNC installed. You can do that by going over to Settings. You can go to Control Panel. On uh, earlier versions of Windows, you can get Control Panel down here. Um, you can go to Hardwares and Sound, and Device Manager is ultimately what you're looking for and once we open up the device manager go to ports com and lpt ports the old printer ports and you can see that the teensy usb is in fact connected to com 10 so i am good i know exactly where where it is but in my case right now i only had one teensy hooked up and well it was kind of a no-brainer it went right on the one and assigned it to um and look at this, we've got, a, we've got the processor, we've got the Teensy sitting here hooked up to a cable. No breadboard, no nothing. And yet we can already start doing something, which I think is just amazing. Um, and let's go ahead and do something. Let's, uh, let's, let's, <clears throat> let's change the rate at which that light is flashing. Right now it's flashing at one time a second. Okay. I want to change it. I want to make it flash, say, ten times a second. All right. Um, to do that, we kind of need to know where the light is. And you can see from this diagram that the onboard LED is hooked up to pin 13. 
Okay, sweet. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, every piece of Arduino code has um, essentially a couple blocks. Basic. Well, I actually do need them both. Have you? Everything I've ever written always has a setup and a loop at least. Okay, so let's create a setup. All right, and every single piece of code. Oh, set up. Get used to it, people. I have I have a typing problem. All right, and we need an open and a close bracket, and it always also has a loop. Open, closed. Okay. So first thing we need to do is we need to tell the Teensy, hey, I want to talk to pin 13. And not only do I want to talk to it, I want to make it an output so that I can send uh, send signal to the LED. So let's just do that. Let's just start with a pin mode. By the way, typing is real important. Uh, capital case, all that stuff. Keep a lookout for it. A lot of times on, on uh, important words, the color will change uh, if, in fact, you did it right. If you don't see it, switch colors then you probably didn't do it right. It's hooked up on pin 13, and we want to make it an output. OK, cool. We've set that up. Now, let's go to our loop, where it's going to go round and round and round and round. Um, I'm going to, uh, let me jump back to this diagram here. This is a, di these are the analog pins. 13, by well, the analog and digital but they have the option of being analog. 13 is only a digital pin. And all I want to do is I want to send it a signal that turns it on and off, high and low, OK? It's a digital signal. So we are going to digital. Oh, look at me go. We are going to, boy, digital right, OK, to pin 13. And we're going to make it high. Okay. And let's say I said 10 times a second. So let's make it delay for 100 milliseconds. Okay. And you think to yourself, wow, ah, look at that. That should work. I've got it. So it's going to be high uh, for 100 milliseconds. Uh, let's load it and watch it fail. Okay, and this being the first time it's run, it's going to have to launch the Teensy Duino software, which will pop up here in a moment. First time is the longest time. Don't worry, it'll be faster next time. And voila, it's doing exactly what I told it to, which is not at all what I want it to do. Uh, the light is on. It's continually on, even though that I'm telling it to just turn on the light and only for 100 milliseconds, uh, it's it's on all the time. That's because I never turn, told it to turn it off. So we have to do a digital write pin 13 low. Do another delay. Oh my goodness. Of 100 milliseconds. <clears throat> and now let's load it up. Oh, did that turn? Yeah, it did. Okay. So now you see it's actually doing exactly what I told it to, which is kind of neat. It's actually turning on. And I guess this is actually more than 10 times a second because I have to off for that. So, but. Bottom line is, let's, well, let's make it 50. Let's make that 50. 50. Now it's going to flash on and off really fast. Oh, it looks funny in video, but it looks beautiful here. That's actually the frame rate is starting to starting to give me errors. Um, so let's go back to, let's make it 500 so it does it 
There we go. And load that up. And I would like to spend, I got, I get 15 minutes a shot on these videos. Let's do one more thing uh, in these remaining few minutes. This is not great code. Uh, two reasons. One is I haven't commented, I haven't made any notes to myself, although the code isn't really that long, so I could probably figure it out. But when code gets to be really long, hundreds, maybe thousands of lines, it can be really difficult to figure out what in the world I was trying to do. And sometimes it's really handy to label things. Most of the time it is. So let's create a label. Let's let's call, I'm going to create a variable, an integer variable. It's going to hold the number 13 because what I want to do is I want to, uh, I'm going to make a, a variable called LED pin. I'm going to set it equal to pin 13, like that. Okay. And um, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace everywhere where it says 13 with LED pin. Okay. So now every time it sees the word LED pin, it knows I mean pin 13. And this was going to be really important when we get to be longer and longer codes. It just makes it more easy to read what's actually happening where and when. Um, then the next thing we really should do is we should make some notes to ourselves because sometimes these things, you, you tend to build code over the course of, oh gosh, sometimes, sometimes years. And it's nice to be able to pull something up and remember, oh, that's right, that's exactly what I was doing. So this is going to be the pin. The LED is connected to. Okay, oh, I should make that a capital D. And let's set, we'll do this. We're going to say that <clears throat> set the pin direction to out. So we know exactly what we did there. And here we're going to say turn the LED on. Uh, for what did I do over there? 500, 500 milliseconds. <coughs> Turn the LED off. For 500 milliseconds. Okay. Now when I load this up. Okay. You can see all this in gray here never gets read by the compiler. It's notes to myself, but it allows me to follow through because as we build longer and bigger and more elaborate code, it's really nice for you to make some notes to yourselves. Think about it as a time capsule to the future. Right now I can remember it, but uh, trust me, there's times when these codes get to be really long or you, ha <clears throat> you hand them off to your friend who's working with you in a competition and they need to be able to figure things out. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save as and I'm going to go ahead and stick it in, let's create, this is the, the default directory, I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it um, class, uh, oh, I don't know, class code. Creating a new directory, I'm going to open up class code and I'm going to write this as uh, flashing light. Okay, and you should be good to go. I'm going to wrap this up, and I will see you in a few moments, and we'll continue to move on. Thanks.